Welcome to Get Real with Ralph. I have a very special set of guests for you today. There was a movie that was filmed here in Kenosha a couple of years back that got released on Amazon called The Book of Birdie. If you have not seen it, you're in for a treat. And I have with me two of the cast members as well as the director and thought that we could share a little bit about their experience filming a movie right here in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And a little bit about Kemper Center, and I want to know, is it really haunted? Those are, those are some of the questions that we're uh, going to address, and uh, just have a little fun with that. So without further ado, I just want to make a couple of introductions. Uh, we have with us via Zoom meetings, Elizabeth Shook, who is Woo! currently, where are you currently right now, Elizabeth? I'm in Belgium, in Bruges. She's in a different country every time I talk to her, but she's in Belgium today, and she was the director of Book of Birdie and a subsequent film that is going to be uh, coming out uh, next year as well. And then I also have with me remotely Kitty Fenn. Am I is that's correct or is that? You yep, we have Kitty Fenn, who is uh, not only an actress, but also an accomplished musician. If you have not looked her up on SoundCloud, you probably should, because she's got some good music. And we have live here in the studio with me, Holly Stanfield, who is a local teacher, teaches drama and theater arts, and had the chance to also be in the production. So with that, welcome, guys. How are you? Hey. Very good. good. Thanks. <laughs> How's everybody doing? It's, uh, it's been a while since uh, you were all together and, and, and filmed the movie. And I have to say, when I watched it the first time, I was like, wow, it is even freakier than the trailer. <laughs> and it was so much, <laughs> so much fun to watch. It, it, it really <laughs> was. My, my 10-year-old was bugging me like crazy that he wanted to watch. I'm like, no, you can't. I don't even know if the movie you're in is going to have a rating low enough for you to watch, but we'll figure that out when the time comes. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, maybe 13 and up. <laughs> so tell me, what was it like, uh, Elizabeth, you're from here and uh, you got to come back and, and film two movies now back to back. What was it like filming at Kemper? Uh, filming at Kemper was a great thing. Um, going to the same location every day, but having a building that was so beautiful and had so many different spaces in it. Um, and also having grown up five blocks away from Kemper, uh, when we were writing the script, I was, I had, I had the rooms of Kemper and the, the, you know, the chapel and the tower and the different, you know, the bits outside, um, with the bench and the tree, like all of that was in my head from Kemper Center exactly when, when we were writing. So we were trying, I, I, honestly, if we hadn't got that building to shoot in, I, I it wouldn't be the same movie. I, it was just, it, it was made to be in that space. And for the ghost stories I heard when I was growing up as well, so... So after filming there and spending a lot of time there, what can you say about the ghost stories? Uh, are they true? Boy, I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I think, well, you know, honestly, I don't know. I really don't. Did you encounter any sort of paranormal activity? Uh, no. No? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the boys would only, we had, we had uh, three, I think, boys on our crew. Um, on a, so we were 70% female crew and 100% female cast. Uh, but the, the, our, our two lovely boys, they, they wouldn't go to the bathroom without each other because they were scared of the bathroom in the basement. They, they were convinced it was really, really haunted. The one where she's painting herself in the mirror in the trailer, um, that one, they are deadly terrified of it. So they would only go to the bathroom like together. So, and there's some spooky bits at night during the day you know it's fine uh, just but sometimes like doors get locked and lights go on after you turn them off and things like that but it felt were, you, were, were you there late at night I, I, I've, I've seen how late you shoot after seeing uh, your subsequent production so I imagine you were filming way into the night on many no, no we uh, honestly uh we were on like a nine to eight schedule with birdie uh so we we were out of there by eight most nights but that's quite dark in winter yeah yeah it's it, it certainly is uh kitty that was was that your first was that your first full feature length production yeah that was and i'm so blessed i love elizabeth and anami and costas and jack and you and me <laughs> <It was great. laughs> we love you too 
<laughs> well, you definitely had a you, you had a very major part in the movie. I'm going to pull up a clip here and 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 roll it real quick, and you guys take a look at it, and then uh, t- tell me how you felt about that clip. Give me just one minute. I have to do the sharing thing here because we are a uh, the talent is the production here at Get Real with Ralph. So I got to wear all the hats. So. So that scene, one of the things I like about it is it gives you a completely different feel for the movie than if you watch the trailer, because the trailer gives you the dark and haunting aspect of the story. And this gives you the warm human element where, where two people are really connecting. One of the things that I saw as just a casual viewer watching the movie is how much you were able to say in that movie with such few words. Me? The movie overall, uh-huh. but yes. But the, 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 the movie overall, I thought, did a really good job of conveying a lot of feelings and emotions without using words. And uh, that, that obviously goes to the credit of, of, of the writers and the directors as well as, uh, as the, the actors in it. But that scene there, you really nailed it. The chemistry between you and Birdie there was f- phenomenal throughout the entire movie. Tell me about that scene. How did, how, did, uh, <laughs> how many times did you take that? How, how hard was it to get it the way that looked? Because that, that, that's a very special scene in that movie. Kitty, wasn't that the first thing we shot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that was that, the first, that was the first scene, first day. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, first thing. We nearly um, burned you guys alive. It was so hot, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, dude. I remember uh, because uh, I, don't, I think we were just getting increasingly closer to the fire uh, as we shot or something. And it was just getting hot on the knees. And um, I remember... <laughs> I like right after we finished, I like just jumped to the like the the snow just so we'd feel better on on the knees. But um, yeah, no, you said something about chemistry, and I was like, yeah, I didn't pick that at all. Ilari is a babe, dude. <laughs> oh, you yeah. guys were so cute. You had great chemistry. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I had a giant crush on her because <laughs> I can't separate fantasy with reality. So. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were well, that would make you a true method yeah. actor then. <laughs> oh, man. And you had a lot of business to do in that scene because you're like lighting a cigarette and whittling a stick and then some marshmallows and then another thing and then another thing. So it was that was a, a tricky scene, I think, especially for Kitty to shoot. So you, you had the heat factor, the cold factor from behind. And then, the, the yeah, we only had like a couple hours to do it on my aunt's farm. And then we had to skedaddle. So. So you had literally just gotten acquainted with each other as cast members when you shot that scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I would have I would have thought that that got filmed toward the end because the familiarity between the two of you looked so authentic there. And that again that's one of the warmest parts I think of the entire yes. movie. I, one of the challenges in talking about Book of Birdie is you can't talk about Book of Birdie without giving away too much of the story so other than the little clips here in the and the trailer i'm not going to say too much other than the the plot is that a young girl is brought by her grandmother to a convent for them to raise her because she's been kind of a problem is that is that a good way of explaining it excellent yes pretty good and this takes place in what approximately what year uh we've gone for roughly 1962 so it's just after like uh, what is it Vatican II and like the the whole changes in the church started happening so it's sure. not we're, we're not really terribly explicit about it but we tried not to put anything that in the film that was later than those dates so right um, that, and, and I, I had captured that feeling that it was around that era I wasn't sure and Kitty of course you get to be the bad girl which is always the fun role to play <laughs> well, I wasn't acting so <laughs> she wasn't acting <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I got I got one more that I wanted to that I wanted to to take a look at here, and then we'll we'll get back and we'll. I got a couple of more couple more questions to ask you guys. All right. The first time I saw that, I thought that I was seeing things. I didn't realize uh -huh. that was in there on purpose. I had to rewind that. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That <laughs> That's exactly the right, the right thing. <laughs> well, then you got me. You got me because I wasn't expect. Once you saw something like that, once you're expecting, but I wasn't expecting that. Was that animation? How did how did you pull that off? Uh, funny you ask. It, it, it was a combination of things because we uh, we could only we had a really 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 small budget on this film, so we could only afford a statue that was like I don't know, yay big, um, like you know that big, and so we had to put it up high and at a low angle so it seemed bigger. Um, so it was on the altar, but obviously we could, we needed it to turn, um, and we needed to not give too much work to the VFX after. So I was actually wearing this shirt. And I put the flannel shirt up on the altar, and I, I just rotated it while he filmed manually. And then in post, he, he cut it out. There, he did the, the VFX blend, basically. So he had to like rebuild parts of the neck in VFX. So that was complex, but it, it was mostly like lo fi mixed with uh, high end VFX. <laughs> so were, you, were you walking around with a green morph suit or, or, or what? Uh, no, no, literally, it was a real statue. Right. It was kind of small that I rotated. Gotcha. Like literally, like, like just. Turned it, and then That's it it. we use the body bit, use the head bit separately. Ah, well, it really, it, it <laughs> definitely looked. I mean, it looked Hollywood, you know. And it's amazing now, in this day and age, how much easier it is for independents to go out there and really film quality stuff. I think that the Hollywood monopoly on the entertainment industry is coming to an end. And that's one of the things I like about the world that we live in, this digital world. Uh, obviously, you know that more than anybody, Kitty. You're producing your own content and putting it out there. Producers, be damned uh, as, as you start to, as you continue to put out music. Do you see that? Do you see that change continue to happen, Holly? Do you see that trend continue to happen, where more and more independent people are able to get their their art out there? and get it consumed by the people that want to watch it without, without the middleman in the way. Yeah, actually quite a few of my students are doing that. That's really great to watch. It's awesome. Awesome. Well, what would you say was the craziest thing that happened on the set? <laughs> I asked for bloopers specifically with you in them, Kitty, and Elizabeth would not give up the goods on you, just so uh -huh. you know. So you got to – I didn't even know there was bloopers. What? There's not really <laughs> bloopers. We, to be fair, we shot on such a tight, precise schedule. There wasn't a ton of time for bloopers. We did have outtakes of the nuns dancing, um, but yeah, th those are pretty fun. Uh, unfortunately, all our computers are packed up to move to Canada, so I literally have them. They're like in boxes downstairs. When you get the dancing nuns, you definitely got to send that to me. That's. That... I feel like it should be a screensaver. With, yeah, it should like, be a yes. Psychedelic <laughs> backgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Crazy to, guys. I, I I honestly don't remember. I think we got locked out of a room one day we wanted to be in. I mean, it wasn't a crazy <laughs> crazy shoot. Uh, but you had a good enough experience that you came back and you shot yet a second movie here, and Kitty got the goods on that, and she got to play the lovely mother to the character that my son was playing, which was, uh, which was a lot of fun. And, and my, my other son got shot in it. So that was a, that was a, that was a weird experience as a dad wow. watching that happen. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I have a feeling you're going to nail it with that one. I really do. I think you've got the goods on that. Second Fingers time. crossed. Yeah. You know, it's all about making sure it gets in front of the right people at the right time so that you get the viral attention that you need. I'm, I'm hoping that I can be at least a little help to that by, by boosting that. So when that thing is out, I definitely, and now the official title of that one is, is the fear of looking up, the fear of looking up, which I, I like that. I like the title a lot, by the way, that's, that's a very cool title. 
And of course that one has Friday Chamberlain in it. Hopefully we can get her. She's very hard to uh, track down, but hopefully we can get, get her to sit in and, and talk about that experience. But you had quite the, uh, you had quite the cast. You had uh, Suzanne Crowley came back for that one as well. Was that harder or easier than the first one? Much, 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 much harder. Birdie, we had, I mean, the group that I gathered for Birdie was so amazing because I, we had an eight woman cast and, and actually Holly was my first director. And yeah. so when I wrote the role of Sister Mercy, I actually wrote it for Holly specifically and then I hoped she'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> Again, it was yeah. I well, that. Amazing. Uh, and it was with. such a joy to bring the group. <laughs> Sorry. How? Well, Holly just said that you were amazing. Yeah. Oh no! It was it was just so fun, and we had, we had such a tight, tiny thing we were trying to get done. But it uh, it was just such a talented group of people. I mean, um, with the you know whole. Yeah, it was just like a special little bubble for, for those very, very cold January days. They were cold. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, it was like 20 degrees inside. <laughs> definitely a tight product. I mean, everything, when your finished product was amazing. I have no idea how, how you did that on such a short budget the way that you really say. Really painful. Don't ask. You do all the uh -huh. cooking yourself and you drive yourself. You do the accounting, you do the producing, the paperwork. It's just a big pain in the butt. Don't do that. <laughs> Get a better budget. <laughs> or I guess the flip side of that is just if you have something, if you have an idea, go out there and, and do it and put the content out there. Because if you're waiting, you know, if you'd have waited for funding, we might not have Birdie. We might not have oh, yeah. uh, the fear of looking up. And so I appreciate the material that you've put out so far. I mean, it's, I, I was I had I watched it three times after I bought it on Amazon. Amazing. It was yeah. uh, it was a very very interesting, cool, and different take on it. I actually have some local ghost hunters here in town that have traveled and done some ghost hunting. And I'm thinking about shooting a segment with them in the middle, you know, overnight at Kemper, and seeing if we can capture any of uh, these <laughs> little visitors on camera. I'll keep you guys posted if we do end up getting the opportunity to Yeah, go to the top floor of like the middle wing. <laughs> the top floor Just of the saying, middle wing. That was the room we all, like it was fine where we were shooting, but the top floor of the middle wing was a bit creepy at night. Um, um, yeah, you know, and I think waiting for funding is not necessarily something you should do. In our case, we had a film that has lady blood in it and religion at the same time. Yeah. And so literally, even if you had, and we we're going for a really feminist standpoint of look, you know, there's not enough women in film, there's not enough women lead characters, there's not enough women directors. Um, but then when you involve religion and lady blood at the same time, you can't quite get feminist money. Yet. <laughs> I literally want to religion I, money because they're money. going to be terrified by the other themes. So it's it it was in just the right niche of. Absolutely unfundability. <laughs> so, but it was great, you know, and, and maybe it was just the wrong year because I think if you're coming out with that this year, you probably would get a little more attention. And I, I almost feel like it might have been a little too early just with the theme and everything. But I mean, I want to go rent a theater out here and play it and get people to go see it. That's how much I believe, not only in the product, but the fact that you came back here and did it and, and, and did it well. And I think so many people have just missed that that's even happening so hopefully this <laughs> next one when it comes around and i know you got the whole film festival political track that you have to run where you everybody wants to be the first one and i don't want to i don't want to screen it if the other place screened it first and all of that but hopefully when all that's done and you're ready to do a full theatrical release this time around let me know. Maybe we can maybe we can connect with some people here and, and get well, the It'd be so fun to do a screening. A hometown screening of either or both would be great. I, I I'm down for that and I would love to try and coordinate that. I've got a lot of contacts here who I know would be really, really happy to facilitate that. Thank you so much for coming on. I know that you're both incredibly busy and I, you know, I want to be mindful of your time, but I really appreciate you coming on and I hope for those of you at home watching this. You've got to go watch The Book of Birdie. It's on Amazon. I'm going to make sure that I have the links at the, in the video description on YouTube and uh, in the uh, comments in Facebook when I put this up. 
if it's any, I will also have in the actual screen itself the name of it. That is The Book of Birdie, directed by Elizabeth Shook. A uh, couple of cast members here we have, Kitty Fenn and Holly Stanfield. Thank you both very much for joining me on Get Real, and I hope we get to talk again soon.